Hello everyone and welcome to Reason 9 Know-How. My name is Dave Askew. In this series, we'll be learning all about the brand new pitch editor that was just introduced in Reason 9. If you're a longtime Reason user, you're going to find that the pitch editor is a very welcomed addition to our Reason sequencer. It gives us the ability of manually correcting and fine-tuning the pitch of any monophonic instrument that's recorded within a stereo or mono audio clip. So by monophonic, we're just meaning that it's playing a single note at a given time, not multiple notes. So this isn't going to work for something like a strummed guitar or a piano. And Propellerhead did make mention that the workflow and the layout of the pitch editor is mainly intended for use with vocals. And when I was working with it, it is very reminiscent of other pitch correction software like the graphical mode in Autotune or even Celimony's Melodyne. So if you're familiar with those pieces of software, you'll also find yourself right at home using this pitch editor, and it actually integrates seamlessly right into our Reason sequencer. So in this video, I want to give you an overview of how we can access the pitch editor and let you hear some of the material that we're going to be using in this series. And for this tune, we'll be working on the first verse and the chorus section, and it's kind of like a mix between an electro and retro synth wave type of song. So up above here, you can see all of our synthesizer parts and all of these audio tracks down below are all of the vocal parts that we'll be tuning. Now in this example, I've already kind of gone ahead and tuned everything up just so you know what it's going to sound like once we're finished. Let's just take a quick listen here. Okay, so now that we've taken a quick listen, let's check out how we access the pitch editor for these audio clips. For the track that you're wanting to correct, you're going to need to be in edit mode. So for any one of your selected tracks, you can see the little arrow to the left here, you can come up and click on edit mode, or you can just double click on the audio clip. Now in this case, it took us directly to the pitch edit window, and it also shows our automation lanes, which we can move out of the way here. If you're not seeing the main work area of the pitch edit window here, just make sure that you're not in slice edit mode or comp edit mode. Make sure that you're in pitch edit mode here. Now, one thing to take into consideration is anytime we enter pitch edit mode, the tracks stretch and transpose type is automatically set to vocal. If you're using different stretch and transpose types, those settings will change once you enter pitch edit mode. So in our pitch edit window here, across the top we have our clip overview. And this shows us the different segments of our audio clip. Now each one of these segments is assigned a note down in the main edit area. And these notes are kind of like MIDI events that we work with in the piano roll editor. The main difference is they represent pitches that are in our audio file. So from left to right we have the length of the note, and up and down we have the pitch. And each one of these pitches correspond to notes on our keyboard. Now the beginning and ends of these notes also represent a slice if you've ever worked in slice edit mode. So that's another thing to keep in mind here, is that if you do end up using pitch correction, all of your slices here actually are going to represent the beginning and end of note values within the pitch edit window. If you're not going to be using slice edit mode, you don't have to worry about this setting, it's just something that I wanted to mention if you do end up using slice edit mode. So another thing that you'll notice is this highlighted area where the notes are active. And this just simply represents the audio clip that we currently have active. So if we were to double click on this audio clip, 
it's going to make the notes for that audio clip active and then allow us to edit them within the pitch editor. Now, once we have a selection made, we can see the properties of that selection in the bar above the clip overview. And you'll see that to the left of the piano roll here, we also have a few extra controls and we'll be diving into all of this stuff in future videos. This is just mainly to familiarize yourself with the layout and how to access the pitch editor. Once you've made all your edits in the pitch editor window, you can close out of it by clicking the close button, which will return you to the main sequencer window. So stay with us and in the next video, we're going to make some coarse pitch adjustments and start to familiarize ourselves with some of the ways that we can correct pitches within these audio clips. We'll see you in the next video.